YouTube, what's going on? Air of Carthage here, and uh, I'm gonna do another follow-up video. It is Christmas time. I've been making some videos about how to build your own computer. I had one where I showed you how to swap out your motherboard. The next one I made was all about how to buy a motherboard because that one confuses a lot of people because there's so many. As a follow-up to that video, a lot of people asked me, Air, hey, can you do more videos like this? Like, especially uh, the other parts? And I was like, sure, I can. So today I'm gonna talk about how to buy a processor, but before I do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split this into two pieces, okay? There's going to be two videos and one here. One, I'm going to cover a couple of builds for the end of 2020 that I want to discuss with you all. Um, and this, these, this segment is for people who kind of know what parts to buy and what it means. Or if you just want to get straight to, hey, tell me what you think is a good buy. That's what these two um, uh, things would be. There's one base and one high end. And then I'm going to move into the second part of the video where I give you some basics on how to pick a processor for your computer, okay? Um, so let's jump right into that. As per usual, I wouldn't be able to do these videos if it weren't for my sponsor, MSI. They send me all kinds of PC parts and have given me all kinds of experience in building computers. Having all these nice parts helps me produce videos with high graphic settings and all the other stuff. So I really appreciate all the support they've given to me over the years. They're a fantastic sponsor. And that's why you're going to see some of their stuff plastered into the video here. Obviously, it's because I use it and because they sponsor the channel and I, I can recommend it, okay? So if you see my MSI bias in here, that's because there is. And you know, <laughs> in, in my opinion, it's a, it's a good thing. But you make of it what you will. I'm just putting that out there for anybody who's watching the video. Um, all right. So now that we're here, let's talk about my two recommendations for builds. I have a base build, which is going to be around the $1,000 price point, And then I have a higher end build, which is going to be around the $1,500 price point. Some of you may be like, Air, but I want something cheaper than $1,000. Okay, that is possible. I would recommend you go to like Paul's Hardware channel or something like that. He's done a lot of builds on slightly cheaper. Um, I, I typically like to start around the $1,000 price point. If you can't make this price point, are there ways to get in? Yes, there is. I'm not going to talk about those here today. Let's quickly cover this build, okay? For processor, Ryzen 5, 3600, 6 cores, 12 threads, great for gaming, um, great cost mostly, which is why we put it in here. And this is this is even not a very good cost right now. Sometimes you can find this processor about twenty dollars cheaper, but with the current state of supply and demand, roughly two hundred dollars. And for two hundred dollars, I think this is about the best processor you're going to get out there right now. For motherboard, the MSI Mag B550M Bazooka. I went with B550 because it has more upgradeability potential in the future. Meaning, if you were to drop a 16-core Ryzen 5950X in this in the future, this motherboard will handle it just fine. Um, it's not going to overheat or have any issues. Um, now, that said, if you never intend to upgrade to that level of processor, then you should look at the B450 Max motherboards from MSI, like the Tomahawk Max, the B450 Gaming Plus Max, the B450 Bazooka Max. There's several. You should go look at those. Um, if you're not ever going to upgrade to that chip. So that's why I suggested this one about 125 bucks US. Another just quick caveat here. These are US prices, obviously, because I'm in the US. You should do some studying on your own region. Prices vary wildly by region. Um, for RAM, you should get, in my opinion, at a minimum, two 8 gigabyte sticks of 3200 speed DDR4 memory. If you can afford 3600 speed and the price is okay, get that. It won't make a huge difference, but it does make some difference on these 3000 series and 5000 series Ryzen processors. Um, so yeah, anyway, this was a pretty good deal. I've used this T-Force Vulcan Z before in a build for my uncle. It was good, does the job nice. It even looks pretty good and neutral as well, so I liked it. Um, the storage, a silicon power, uh, one terabyte solid state drive. This is not an M.2, but it's still fast and it has plenty of room for all your games. Um, so yeah, that's why I recommended this one. Uh, video card, MSI GeForce RTX 3060 Ventus. This card is not available on the shelves right now unless you get extremely lucky. And this is where the, the build in 2020 is going to get difficult. Um, graphics cards just aren't available. If you already have a computer, what I would suggest is you build the new computer parts and then just keep your graphics card for a while. Um, and run the old graphics card in the new build until the new ones come out. And then you can sell your old computer. Um, but uh, if you don't have a graphics card at all, you may want to wait until you can find this graphics card and then come back and purchase all the other parts. Um, but yeah, graphics cards going to be very hard to find. I recommended the 3060 Ti um, from NVIDIA because it's going to provide very good performance at 1080p, like very good 1080p performance. 
It'll provide really solid 1440p, and some games maybe even 4K. Um, it's a great card to span the spectrum. I would probably use it at 1080p um, and just do really high refresh rate gaming. But it will probably do pretty darn good at 1440p as well. It depends on the monitor that you buy. If you can find this for close to the $400 MSRP, now this price is in black because the prices weren't even available. Watch the prices. Go look at the MSRP in your region for the NVIDIA cards. Buy it as close to that price as possible. Try not to ever pay more than 10% over the MSRP. Sometimes you may have to. These cards are difficult to find. You're going to have to see who might stock them, how often they restock them. You may even just need to wait until January or February when stock starts to get better and just buy it then. Anyway, that's video card. The case, I just use this little Cooler Master Master Box because it's a nice little mini tower case. I've used this recently. It's an excellent case um, and does the job just fine. Power supply, the Seasonic was a good example of a 650 watt, 80 plus uh, bronze certified. I, I recommend you get at least a bronze certified for this. And I, 550 watts would probably get you by, but you should go with 650 if it's available and you get a good deal here anyway. So this is my base build. This one's going to get you really excellent high refresh 1080p, probably pretty solid refresh rates at 1440p. And maybe if you're able to drop the settings a little bit, you could probably even game with 4K um, with this build. So that's what this build is. I think this is a really solid performance for the price. Um, assuming you can get the video card for somewhere in this neighborhood, somewhere between 400 to 450 would be acceptable. Um, if you can find an older video card with similar performance at a similar price point on, say, like eBay, and when I say similar performance, you'd probably be looking at something like a 1080 Ti used, a 5700 XT, an RTX 2080 or 2080 Super. Again, I would want them at this price or lower, um, and the lower the better. Um, those, those graphics cards would all give you probably similar performance outside of ray tracing, of course, um, and give you something pretty nice in this build. So those are also options you can bear in mind. Let's go to the higher end build. Um, only a few things really change here. One, I recommend you upgrade your motherboard to the Mag uh, X570 Tomahawk. X570 has a few more offerings over B550 that I think are useful. Um, and this is a full-size board with full expansion. You don't have to make this change here, though. You can save that money you want and stick with the motherboard we had in the last build, and you'll be just fine. I also gave you the option of upgrading to the Ryzen 5 5600X. This is going to be faster at gaming, though it's the same number of cores and threads. I just don't really recommend an 8-core um, processor right now. But you can get the 8-core Ryzen 5 3700X for roughly this price, and that's a choice that you can make. The 5600X is still pretty hard to find because it's mostly out of stock. Um, so again, look at those options. You make that decision. The same RAM, because why fix what isn't broken? This RAM works just fine. You don't need to spend any more money. The same solid-state drive for the same reason. Um, and then as far as a graphics card... I'm kind of an AMD fanboy right now, and I think it'd be really cool to have the RX 6800. Its, it's uh, MSRP is 550. It is extremely difficult to find one at 550 unless you get a um, reference model card, which sometimes you can. If you can snag a reference RX 6800 for, and I, I put 550, I actually think it's 570 or 579. I could be wrong by a little bit, so I apologize here. If you can get this at the at the MSI, or sorry, the Radeon RX 6800, at the MSRP, get it. It's a great card, assuming that you're not really into ray tracing. Um, it's going to be the superior card. Now, if you want ray tracing, go ahead and swap this out for an RTX 3070. MSI has a few models of the 3070, and so do a lot of other companies. The MSRP on the 3070, I think, is $500. Get it as close to that $500 MSRP as possible. Um, those are your two options. So again, 6800 from Radeon or the 3070 from NVIDIA. Pick which one you want. Um, the Radeon card probably has slightly better just standard performance and more video RAM. The NVIDIA card has some ray tracing options and less VRAM, but probably slightly, you know, again, it's just going to be better with DLSS and ray tracing and that kind of stuff. So it just depends on what you want. Both are viable options. A case, I upgraded us to the Meshify C. Um, the Meshify C has really good airflow. If you are going to build a higher end computer like this, I recommend you get a case with good airflow. It doesn't have to be the Meshify C. I'm just using this as an example. Um, so check that out. Uh, and then as far as a power supply, at this level, I'd recommend 750 watt, 80 plus gold. Um, do you have to have this? No. 
but I think you should. If you're going to build something this nice, you should at least get a good power supply. Um, and so I use this Cooler Master MWE Gold. This is all of these parts that I've recommended here. I've used before, with the exception of the new graphics cards, because not even I can get one right now. I've used all of these parts before. That's part of the reason why I'm recommending these parts. They're good parts. They work good. I have experience with them. Anyway, if you have any questions on the builds, let me know. But that's a quick run through of the base build and the higher end build. Uh, can you swap these out for Intel parts? Yes, you can. If you have any questions about that or you want me to help you do that, let me know and I'll help you with it. Um, if you have any questions about other cases, other motherboards, B450 motherboards versus B550 or X570 on the Intel, what kind of motherboard would I need? Just hit me up in the comments, okay? If you want to see some modified version of this, hit me up in the comments and I'll help you. I'll have a link to these in the description. Hopefully this was helpful to you all. Let's move on to the next part of the video though, which is where I want to discuss how to buy a processor. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how to purchase and which processor you should purchase if you're going to build a gaming PC. I think to start things off, um, there's a few things I want to talk about that you need to know about processors. One is the number of cores that a processor has, and two, the clock speed at which those cores operate. I find that a very good, um, uh, I guess, simile to use um, for cores and clock speed is like a highway. Um, or, you know, whatever, it, whatever it's called in your country. In the U.S., like, I think of a highway or, or an interstate. If you're in a rural area, you might have a two-lane highway. And those two lanes, um, even if the speed limit is high, can only fit so much traffic because it's one lane in each direction. Um, then if you get onto, like, a four-lane highway or an interstate or more lanes, six, eight, you can now fit a whole lot more traffic going either direction, and the speed limit might increase as well, meaning the cars, you can move more cars and they can move faster. Well, that comparison kind of carries over into processors as well. <clears throat> the number of cores, and I apologize, I have a little bit of a sinus thing right now. No COVID, I'm, I'm good. Um, but yeah, so the number of cores is kind of like the number of lanes on a highway. The more cores a processor has, the more things it can do simultaneously assuming that the software you're running will take advantage of all those cores, right? And games kind of do nowadays, but not entirely, okay? So just bear that in mind. So the number of cores is like the number of lanes in a highway. The clock speed is like the speed limit. The faster the speed, the better it is going to be for you, okay? The lower the speed, the lower the performance. All right, that is the basis for things you need to know about a processor's cores and clock speed. Let's look at one as an example. Here is an Intel processor, an i9-10850K. 10 cores, okay, that's the number of cores. And the clock speed, it's, a, it's just listing the base frequency here at 3.6. So this is a couple other things. Processors will list a base frequency. That means this is the absolute minimum frequency they will operate if they are in full load. It'll operate at at least 3.6 gigahertz at the lowest. Now, they also usually have a boost thing, and you can go look at the specifications. This one boosts all the way up to 5.2 gigahertz. The boost will be what your processor will do in a best case scenario. It'll boost up to that, assuming that it's not too hot, assuming that it's not running too many cores, all these other things. So that's like the best case scenario, right? And sometimes where you usually end up operating is somewhere in between, but a lot of that depends on the, uh, the processor itself, okay? So that's a good example of what we just talked about. Now, one more thing I wanna talk about. We talked about cores, and I compared it to lanes on a highway, all right? There's also something called simultaneous multi-threading, which means that you can take a core and you can kind of turn it into two cores logically, even though it's not physically two cores. That is simultaneously simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT. So here you see on this Intel one, it says 10 core, but the number of threads, it says 20. So logically speaking, it's kind of like having 20 cores operating on this Intel processor. AMD offers a very similar thing. Not all processors offer simultaneous multi-threading. It is something you should look at. It is better to get it than to not have it uh, because why would you not want more performance out of the processor, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind. If you ever see cores and threads, um, it's basically telling you whether or not there is SMT on that processor. In this case, there is because it's only 10 cores, but it has 20 threads. So it is simultaneously multi-threaded, okay? And that's even mentioned right down here in hyper-threading is what Intel calls it, yes. 
All right, so that's the basics of how you look at what a processor is and what it does. Now, why is picking a processor important? Does it make a difference in gaming? Let's explain that real quick. The processor makes the biggest difference if you're gaming at a lower resolution. So let's say you're gaming at 1080p resolution, which is just standard HD. The processor will make a much bigger difference at standard HD because the graphics card will be handing off frames to the processor much faster at the lower resolution and the speed of your processor has a much bigger impact on the performance of the game. If you are going to game at 1080p, you should probably focus a little more on clock speed when choosing a processor or a processor that is just better um, at 1080p, okay? When you get into 1440p, which is 2K or, you know, the next step up in HD, um, at 2K, the processor starts to make significantly less difference in performance. And so clock speed and all that stuff will play a whole lot less. Imp uh, like, so for instance, I game at 2K. I used to notice a pretty big, big difference between Intel and AMD when I was gaming at 1080p a couple of years ago. But now that I'm in 2K, I can't notice any difference between uh, an Intel or an AMD. Um, and it's because the graphics card becomes more the constraint because there's a lot more work going on in the graphics card to get those much higher resolutions out. And so the processor doesn't have to be as fast to keep up with the frames. And when you go to 4K, there is almost no difference between processors because the graphics card is being so heavily loaded um, that it's just really not an issue for the processor to keep up. Now, I may not have explained these perfectly in terms of the technicalities, but I promise you that's how they behave, at least at the moment. So, that being said, again, if you want to go 1080p, try and get something with a good clock speed for the price. If you're looking at 1440p or 4K, it honestly really doesn't matter. Like, clock speed is irrelevant. It's not really going to make any difference in your performance. Very little is what I should say. Uh, uh, very little. Nothing that's probably going to be massively noticeable. Anyway, that's just my recommendation. All right, now let's talk about Intel versus AMD. All right, now that you know the basic functions of a processor and how they impact gaming, what should you pick, Intel or AMD? Honestly, this is an opinion. You, you can, you're going to need to pick the one that you think best suits you. If, if you were going to game at 1080p, Intel is pretty darn convincing. Uh, because they have a very high clock speed. They're, they have higher clock speeds than AMD. Intel comes at a bit of a premium, and they're a little bit behind when it comes to some of the features on the motherboard. This is a weird place for Intel to be. Intel has always been kind of a premium product. You were going to pay more for it because you got the better performance. As of recently, AMD released the 5000 series, and honestly, even their 3000 series, there wasn't a ton of difference between Intel and the 3000 series. The 5000 series for AMD caught it. Either one is totally viable, and the 5000 series prices for AMD are high, Intel prices are always high. The two are honestly kind of a trade-off, if you ask me. Personally, I would pick AMD just because I'm leaning towards them, and they have some other advantages that I like, but Intel is still totally viable. Um, and like I said, especially if you're going to be gaming at 1080p, they're still totally viable. So what you want to pick is up to you. Both are okay. You saw in my recommended builds earlier in the video that I recommended AMD, it's because I'm high on AMD right now, and I like them, and I just think they're a better option right now based on the way that I determine value. That may be different for you, okay? So let me explain a few things. For Intel, if you were going to use an Intel processor for gaming, I suggest you ignore the Core i3. Can you game on an i3? Yes. Are they great at it? No. Um, unless you were to get an exceptionally good sale on an i3, I don't recommend them. Also, one other thing, I would recommend that if at all possible, try to get a processor with a minimum of six cores and 12 threads. If you get one with four cores and eight threads, it is okay. You're not going to be bad at gaming, but it will be less future proof. Six cores and 12 threads is better. Four cores and eight threads is okay. So that's kind of your minimum where you should come in. The i3 has a lot of four core processors, some of which don't have extra threads. And if you got a four core, four thread processor, that's just bad. It's not good for gaming right now. Um, will it run some games? Yes, but you're going to pay a price for it over the years and I don't recommend it. Core i5 for Intel tends to be six core parts. Depending on the generation of Intel, you need to look closely. They don't always multi-thread their um, i5s. So if it says six core, it may only be six cores. Um, it, but I know in the most recent generation, they are six core, 12 threads. So when it comes to Intel, watch for that. The ninth generation was not simultaneously multi-threaded unless you got a Core i9. 
and then the 10th generation is, and the generations before that were, so just kind of watch out when you go to pick Intel. Intel 9th generation and 10th generation are both excellent for gaming right now. So the core i5 um, is like the mid-range, i7 is a higher range, and i9 is the absurd money-spending range. Um, i5 and i7 are both excellent for gaming. Um, i5, if you want to get in cheaper on it, in fact, if I was going to recommend an Intel processor right now, it would certainly be um, one of two. I would recommend on the lower end the 10600K, which is a 6-core 12-thread. I should have already had this pulled up. I'll pull it up here. Um, so if you're going to go Intel, the 10600K is a fantastic processor or just the standard 10600. But since they're the same price, I wouldn't buy this one. I would just get the 600K in case you want to overclock it. So that's what I would recommend from Intel right now um, at the at the mid-tier. And then if you were going to buy a higher tier Intel chip, the Core i9 um, 10850K, in my opinion, is probably the next decent value because it's going to perform uh, really well against, say, like a Ryzen 3900X or a 5900X. And the price is actually pretty reasonable compared to those two parts as well. Is it quite as good as the AMD parts? No, but it's pretty reasonable and probably has better gaming performance than a 3900X. Probably not the 5900X, but, you know, it's it's a good one. Uh, and of course, you can always go with the i7 um, and go that route. But anyway, that's Intel for the moment. Let's flip over to AMD. Now, similar to Intel, AMD um, stratified their product marketing so that you could compare it easily to Intel. The Ryzen 3 series is very similar to Intel or i3. AMD Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7, i5, i7, Ryzen 9, i9. AMD did this purposefully so that you could compare their product stack easily to the Intel product stack. So at least that makes it nice for you as a consumer to know how to compare the AMD parts straight to the uh, to the um, Intel parts. Now, uh, as far as my most recommended Ryzen processor right now, um, as far as value goes, it's going to be the Ryzen 5 3600. The Ryzen 5 3600 um, is the best performance for price out of any processor anywhere in the stack, in my opinion, right now. It gives you a nice balance of workload and performance, gaming performance, and all at a price point of around $200. This was on sale for as low as about $175 or $180 a couple months ago, so you can watch sales on this thing. It comes with a cooler. Oh, this is one thing I forgot to mention. Intel processors don't tend to come with coolers in the box, meaning you have to spend extra money on a cooler. That is another downside to Intel. An upside to Intel is that they overclock very well. Um, but don't worry about overclocking because this is just a video about how to buy a processor, period. So I'm assuming you all don't know anything about overclocking. Um, but in any case, um, I would recommend the Ryzen 5 3600 right now. If you can find it in stock and you don't mind paying the extra money, then you could go with the 5600X, which is the better at gaming, newer version of the 3600, okay? Um, but it also costs literally $100 more, even if you can find it in stock, which you can't most of the time. It's this one right here, and you can see here the price is 300 and it's sold out. It's very difficult to buy right now because of demand. All of the Ryzen 5, or sorry, all of the Ryzen 5000 series are mostly out of stock and very difficult to buy right now, though if you can get one, they are fantastically good at gaming, but their prices are high. You're going to pay a premium for them, and that's why I'm mostly recommending the Ryzen 3000 series right now if you're wanting to come in at a more reasonable price, and specifically the 3600. Um, so that's how AMD stratify, uh, stratifies their part. Uh, their parts is the 3579, just like Intel, the Core i5-3, or sorry, 3579. Um, cores, threads, clock speeds. Those are the things you need to know when it comes to picking a processor. If you have any questions, hit me up down in the comments. I'm happy to answer those for you. I hope this was useful. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll be back soon, and I think the next topic we're gonna cover is video card, how to choose a video card or GPU, graphics processing unit. Um, and it's very important for a gaming build, so I wanted to start with processor because we talked about motherboard. Video card will be next. I will make that video probably sometime in uh, early January and help you all understand that one. Eric Carthage, signing out from now. I will see you then.